Hi everyone, welcome to today's class in which we are going to start with a very important chapter human health and diseases. Now health and disease both are two sides of the same coin. As long as we are enjoying and we are feeling comfortable we say that we are healthy and suddenly a virus may breach our defense mechanism and achoo, there is sickness. So what all do the various philosophers and the modern day scientists think about health and disease? This is what we are going to discuss today and also some of the important diseases caused by viruses. So let's begin our topic today and that is human health and diseases. Now you see, if we talk about the earlier times, then according to Hippocrates. Now Hippocrates is considered as father of modern western medicine and he was of the opinion that within the body there are four humors. Now humors is a Greek term for fluids. So there are four fluids in the body and those fluids have to be maintained in balance for proper health. If one or the other fluid is imbalanced that brings in illness. So that was the concept behind the humoral theory of Hippocrates. Now what are those four humors in the body? So according to this theory there are four humors were yellow bile, black bile, phlegm and blood. Now out of this they used to think that if this black bile is in greater amount that brings in fever and earlier the system of medication used to be bloodletting. That means they used to cut a particular blood vessel and allow the blood to flow out that all that bad humor will be flowing out and again health will be restored. However, that ended with the life of some of the patients. Later when the entire circulatory system was discovered and that was by William Harvey that this humoral theory got discarded. Back home if we talk about it was Charak who also has a similar connotation about health and according to him there are three things in our body that is the bile, phlegm and the wind and these have to be in important balance and this is the basic premise behind our Indian system of medicine that is Ayurveda. As we said the discovery of the blood circulation by William Harvey and he used various experimental methods by that this good humor and bad humor hypothesis was discarded and he found that in the body there is nothing like black bile. Now we know that since we have studied the entire anatomy as far as the term yellow bile is concerned now we use it just for the bile juice which is produced by the liver. Phlegm is considered the mucus which is released from the body when we cough out and blood of course is the main circulating fluid in our body. So this humor theory has been totally disproved. Now the new definition for health as it has been given by the World Health Organization, this defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and it is not merely absence of disease or infirmity. So according to this definition it is really difficult to think about that whoever is actually totally healthy because physically we might be healthy but there might be some kind of mental disorder even a phobia that is fear of the spider that is also a kind of mental disorder even that uh, shows that entire person with entire definition of health is not possible in any one person. Now coming to the next part that is mind and mental state this can affect the health of the person. So accordingly health is affected by there are genetic disorders the defects which are passed on from generation to the generation because there has been a mutation in the DNA. So that mutated DNA in the chromosomes is passed on from parents to the child and accordingly the child will have the disease. The other one is the infections. 
Now these are acquired from the surroundings and in the surroundings we know there are number of bacteria, viruses, fungal spores are there, helminth infections, all these infections we can acquire because of contaminated food or water, maybe through the air, through the food that we are taking and that will also affect the health. And last but not the least, lifestyle. Nowadays, the maximum disorders are because of the lifestyle. Because we are having a sedentary lifestyle, our food habits are not as which should be along with the lifestyle. That means, if we are eating very rich food and we are not exercising, even that will result in disorders. So, these kind of various problems are there which are affecting the health. Now, what are the requisites? That means, what all is needed for maintaining good health? So, hygienic and balanced diet, of course, that is first and foremost. Clean drinking water. So, proper potable water is the fundamental right of everybody. Personal and community hygiene. That is, if we maintain hygiene, that is proper bathing and keeping the body clean, keeping the hands clean after doing any job, washing it with soap and so on, that certainly is personal hygiene. But if our surroundings are unclean, then our personal hygiene will also be not so effective because infection is surrounding us. Regular physical exercise so that we can keep all our joints and body parts in proper working order. Awareness about diseases. So, one should know that which all diseases can be there and usually in the newspapers at times, in the TV news, we read about certain diseases which are spreading as an epidemic, sometimes a pandemic that is from continent to continent it is spreading. So, in that case, we should know how to protect ourselves. So, first it is the awareness and then comes the protection and immunization. So, for number of diseases, the vaccines are available. So, if we can get ourselves immunized by taking those vaccines, we are protected from those diseases. Proper disposal of waste because in the waste, number of organisms, they multiply the house flies, they will be sitting on those ways and transferring as mechanical carriers the infection to the food and the water that we are using. So, even that can affect health. And of course, control of vectors. Like we know number of diseases are spread by insect vectors, especially mosquitoes. So, if we can control the mosquitoes in our surrounding, we can also control the spread of diseases. Now, next what is a disease? Since we have talked so much about disease. Now, disease comes from two words, dis plus ease. That means when the person is not feeling comfortable, there is some kind of ailment in the body, that would be disease. So, any physical or functional change from the normal state that can cause discomfort, that can be categorized as disease. Now, diseases can be broadly classified into two, that is infectious diseases and the non-infectious diseases. Now, coming to the non-infectious diseases, because in this chapter, we will be mainly studying the non-infectious diseases. And in this, the diseases can be organic. That means, due to malfunctioning of a body part, a body organ is not functioning properly like heart diseases. There is an impaired valve in the heart or the conducting system of the heart is not working properly. So, that would be under the category of organic disease. The other one is deficiency diseases. Deficiency as the term denotes that in our diet, there is some nutrient, maybe a vitamin that is in lesser quantity. And even if the body is not secreting a certain hormone in proper level, that can also be considered as a deficiency disease. For example, beriberi, which is due to deficiency of vitamin B1, that is thiamine. Diabetes, that is due to the problem with insulin secretion or maybe the change in the receptors, that is a deficiency disease. Allergies. 
Now, allergies don't occur to everybody, but some people, they are hypersensitive to certain substances called allergens. And these allergens are harmless otherwise, like pollen grains. Now, pollen grains are harmless, but the immune system has become active against those whenever it is exposed to the allergen it will mount an attack and that will create problem with the body so allergy as such we will be discussing later in this chapter in a more detailed aspect and last but not the least cancer this again will be our discussion in the later part of the chapter this is caused by uncontrolled mitosis the cell keeps on dividing and that too is because of mutation in the dna of the cell so these were some of the non-infectious diseases in this chapter however first of all we are going to take up the infectious diseases now infectious diseases are caused by pathogens like viruses Rickettsia, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and helminths. So, these are various causative agents which can cause the infectious diseases. And these diseases are easily transmitted from one infected person to a healthy person. That is the reason these are also called communicable diseases. So, infectious diseases are communicated from one person to the other. Now, what pathogen is exactly important or which is the causative agent for a disease to find out that Dr. Robert Koch who was a German doctor he found out certain ways by which we can pinpoint the pathogen for a disease. So now let us discuss about those Koch postulates. <laughs>